Oh, hello everyone. I'm Jean-Michel Payon, and I'm the only one there that doesn't take pictures, but you can. Uh, and I'm extremely happy to be there with you. So actually, I need to put me so that you can recognize me in case you confuse me with Pauline, which I hope you don't. Um, so I am a collector uh, and an investor in digital art, and I was kind of, you know. Uh, famous for collecting a bit of photography, so I know those three persons that are there that are talking between themselves, but at some point they will talk to you. And actually I will not talk too much about myself because it's not very interesting. We are, talk we are there to talk about photography, and more importantly we are there to talk about the, the variety of the movement of photography, because photography is not a single movement, it's a global movement, it's actually probably the, the, the most important movement for the past 200 years in the art world. And, uh, and we have the chance to have John Knopf, we have Pauline Fayef, and Omar Robles. And with those three photographers, we have very different um, you know, art movements within the, within the photography world. So we have landscape with John, we have nude art with Pauline, and we have city and street art with Omar. So without further ado, may I ask you to introduce yourself because I think you'll do better than I do. Uh, and then I will start to ask you a couple of questions, both the three of you and specific question about what you do in your art, okay? Yeah. You go first. Oh my. Right, so hello everyone, thank you so much for joining us. I'm uh, really happy to be here um, speaking about photography in the main, main stage. Um, my work is based as, um, as uh, uh, Jean-Michel was uh, speaking about, my work is based around street photography and ur the urban environment, particularly my work uh, more on the documentary side, photographing people. Um, and um, I'm actually standing in for a fellow photographer, uh, Dave Krogman, who's also, we go way back uh, from the Instagram days uh, in New York City. Um, and each one of them pres uh, is presenting a different uh, curation, representing each one of these uh, ramifications or, or uh, styles of photography. Uh, so I'm joining in on the on the uh, street photography side, and I, I believe one of my photos is going to be part of the curation. Um, yeah, and I'm then going to uh, pass the mic to Pauline to speak about her work. Hi everyone. So I'm Pauline Fayef. Um, I describe myself uh, never a model or a photographer. Actually, I do use uh, photography as my medium to express myself. I do a lot of uh, self-portraits. I do also collaborations with uh, with uh, photographer. And here you can see the curation about nude art. Okay, so <laughs> here it is. Um, so I do also curation. Um, what I do is I mix uh, poetry, uh, tenderness, uh, sensuality, and femininity in my work. And here I had the chance uh, to do a curation about nude photography for the second time. And thank you again, NFC, for the trust. Thank you for letting me uh, showcase all of those artworks. Um, all of those artists are part of the nude uh, photographers. Um, you know, nude photography, um, I was doing a debate just a few minutes uh, before about censorship. Uh, we are extremely censored uh, on social media. We are shadow banned, so no one can see, I mean, few people can see our art, and uh, it has really bad consequences of what we do. So I'm happy that here you can see what is nude art for me. It's unveiling freedom. It's... Uh, yeah. It's being greater with ourselves. It's about um, tenderness. It's about brave. Um, so yeah, that's who am I? And here is the creation. Okay, thank you very much, Pauline. So actually, let's start with John. So let me a very quick intro with John, and then we'll showcase the art of of John Knopf. So John, you are a professional photographer. You are. Um, you know, you've been around like for more than a decade, uh, and your specialty is about landscape. But tell us a little bit more as soon as we have the uh, visual showing up. Yeah. And, oh, I think it started, finally, you know, it's always like, so tell us more about your art, about landscape, what inspires you, who are the artists that inspire you, where you come from, and where are you hiding to? 
Uh, my name is John Knopf. I'm a landscape photographer. I have been shooting for the better half of my life, about 16, 17 years now. Um, I originally got into photography to sell um, prints, so that is primarily how I made my money. Was uh, you know my income was basically selling prints, trying to establish myself in galleries, and trying to basically travel the world and create sustainable income, which is obviously, as we all know, photographers have a very fun journey. But um, with this curation, I really specifically went for you know what my uh, eye is attracted to, which is landscapes. Um, I chose a lot of these photographers because I think their work obviously is very incredible, their lighting. But when I look at a landscape, you know, what I'm looking for is something I think that uh, a lot of landscape photographers get. When you walk up to an epic, you know, canyon or you get up to a waterfall and you get like that chill that goes through your body that you can't get from anything else, that's usually what landscape photography does for me. And so I look for that curation. I look for those pieces that really hit hard. And then I look with what, it, you know, that artist did within the ecosystem, how they built through their creation and you know, just kind of what they've done through their work and their legacy. And I try to highlight it as much as possible. And a lot of this work is just, for me, just absolutely incredible. And I have to give you know, so much credit to these just incredibly talented photographers. There's Hendro and just, yeah, just so many amazing photographers. If you look around, this is definitely my favorite type. As you can see, like, I light up when I talk about photography because landscapes are just totally my passion. Um, yeah. yeah, and and maybe did you mention the kind of artists that inspire you to do what you do or not yet? What wh who's, who are the artists that inspire you in the past and probably right now to do what you are doing and who are your artists aiding to? Yeah, um, I mean my biggest inspiration has been Ansel Adams from day one. You know his, I followed his zoning system. A lot of people don't really use filters anymore. People don't really do like the old school technology. There's Photoshop and a lot of advancements now. But back when I got into photography, that didn't exist. So. Um, I've always been a big fan of what Ansel Adams did, how he created his legacy, um, and yeah, I've, I've followed his methods for, you know, still to this, today, still carrying around the original Instagram filters in my backpack. Very cool. Oh, Thank by you. the way, um, because we have like, well, actually, I will start, I will continue with other questions because we need to continue, and then uh, if we have more time, I, I'll come back because I have got a couple of questions for the three of you, actually. So now, let me go to Pauline, and uh, I want to be precise on what I will be saying. So, uh, so Pauline is a, is, a, is a neither a model nor a photographer, uh, but she's a passionate French artist, and um, she doesn't want to be confined to a single definition, and, but your heart is about the space of creativity, and because we know each other quite well, I also know that what you're doing is amazing art, but it's also extremely difficult in the art world, and especially on platforms like Instagram and things like that, but because your heart is about freedom, tell us a little bit more about you know, your heart and how you are translating the freedom of spirit that you have into your heart and to your photography and how you basically do what you like and, and voila. Okay, thank you so much for this question, Jean-Michel. Um, so I ended up doing nude photography, trust me, I didn't want. I mean, uh, it's so painful every single day being able to show what I do, uh, to face a lot of judgment, uh, but that's what I do. I ended up doing it in the middle of a wild ocean. Uh, I did one, and this day I felt, um, I felt in love with myself for the first time. I've been uh, tr struggling a lot with uh, loving my body, loving myself in general, and being nude, uh, I could not hide myself with clothes, I could not be anyone else than myself. We don't pretend when we do nude, we are just human being, uh, and, uh, and that's how I express my freedom. Thank you very much. And maybe, um, and then eventually we'll get your image as well, so that we can have the, the sound and the image as well. Um, can you tell us a little bit more, you know, where you are heading to and where you want the audience and us to, to bring? Well, what do you want us to, to be brought? Sure. Um, so what I would love to expre express with this curation, unveiling freedom, is that uh, we are all human bodies. Uh, we have all uh, strengths and weaknesses. And I think uh, within this curation, you can feel how brave we are and uh, how the humanity can be, can be so simple and so brave at the same time. 
Thank you very much, Pauline. I will come back on, to you on, uh, in a minute. And maybe, maybe Omar. So Omar um, is a street photographer, he's a former dancer, amazing dancer. And you are bridging the gap between photography, city, and dance. But I think today is more about the city and, uh, and actually, well, actually both. So can you tell us, tell us a little bit more? You are from New York, you are right now in Europe, but you keep on going many things, Obscura as well. Tell us a little bit more about everything we see and especially this beautiful picture uh, and your, where you come from and also what is your journey and where you, where you are basically heading to. Definitely, so <coughs> happy to talk a little bit about my work, but I think I want to first go through a, a lot of what I see in the, in the, in the, in the curation that Dave did. Um, you know, one of the beautiful things, or the beautiful thing I think and about street photography, and, and I, you know, Dave is a personal friend and we have like the same kind of like mantra and thing, like we carry our cameras everywhere because for us, life is, is the beauty and that's what we're trying to, to portray in every single frame that we, that we photograph, that we make. Um, and this is what I love, every single one of the species that I see here is because they represent, you know, like those moments of life that oftentimes we take for granted, but they really are stories, are deep stories, just like, you know, shadows or, or the things in the city. Uh, personally, I live in New York. Um, I've been to New York, uh, living in New York for over 12 years. Um, the city speaks to me, you know, like uh, I, I, I can go to the countryside and whatever, but the, the silence just kills me, but the city, the life, the, 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 the sounds, the, the smells even, they, they just, you know, bring me back to life. And that's what I want to share uh, when, I, when I use my camera. And I think every single one of these photographers, um, is, if you can see the, their, their images, that's what they're trying to portray. Uh, when it comes to my work, um, one of the images that you saw is it's, it's in there. Um, I do straight street photography, a little bit of, of what you've seen here as well. But then this one is uh, the, the particular one that I, uh, that I worked with. Um, and um, I, as John michel men men mentioned, I used to be a performer myself um, and trained as a dancer, as a gymnast, and as a mime for you know, many years. Uh, eventually, life brought me to photography. And I, as I mentioned, I love the urban environment. And for me, I started working on this series with dancers actually as a self-portrait project. Um, the thing is that I became a little bit older, jumping became a little bit harder, and then I decided to art soldier jumping to other you know, people with more able bodies than myself. Uh, but the idea really is to use the aesthetic of the city and juxtapose that greediness, that you know, like roughness of the city against uh, the softness, the, the airiness, the etherealness, uh, lines of the dancers, and that's where that series came from. So that's the image that you saw there. Um, and yeah, I mean, and I hope as, as we were talking, you really take your time to uh, admire every single one of the images that you see, because uh, I, I think Pauline did an amazing, beautiful job with her curation, so did Dave, and so did um, John, and I think, you know, I, I'm really happy that we're getting, getting to experience photography in this way, that I'm not sure we've done it uh, many, many times, so, so I'm really happy for this uh, opportunity, yeah. Thank you, Omar. Actually, I, I don't know if we can show uh, maybe at some point. I've got a question for you on this one. And actually, that, that will be the question for each of you. How long did it take you to take that picture? I mean, you could say that it took me an afternoon. Yeah. But you could also say that it took me over 10 years, right? Um, this body of work I've been creating for over 10 years. I was a dancer myself, as I, as I mentioned before. So I know exactly how to portray dance. I know exactly how to, you know, w what is the right moment. Um, this image in particular, it, there was a little bit of a special, you know, attachment to it because I created it in a moment where um, I had to leave New York, which I love dearly, uh, for a significant amount of time because my dad was going through uh, cancer treatment and I had to leave that summer. So. I wanted to get create like one last image of New York before I before I left that summer, and and this is by by this time I was living in ha Washington Heights. Um, it was a very hot summer, and this is something that happens in New York City, and especially in the in the you know rougher neighborhoods where not everyone has air conditioning. Uh, so the neighborhood usually they 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 open up the fire hydrants and it really lowers the temperature. So that whole summer I did a series photographing kids families um, enjoying themselves around, uh, around the, 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 um, the, the fire hydrants. And, um, and uh, that, that afternoon, I got the news that I had to leave New York and I had to join my father. Um, and I had been ruminating with the idea of like creating a photo with a dancer for years uh, on a fire escape. 
and um, and I, I, something told me it's, it's today or never. So I started to reaching out to the network of dancers that, that I've worked with. Um, you know, it was like a very last minute thing, but finally I was connected with uh, Spencer Everett. Uh, he's, he's, he's the name of the dancer. And, you know, we met in my neighborhood and, and we found this fire hydrant that I had already scouted. And, you know, did several attempts, did several takes, uh, several different things. But this one take is the one that I chose specifically because it has both that idea of the dancer, but also the spontaneity. Uh, I don't know if I'm using that word correctly, but spontaneity? Well, anyway that one. Um, off street, right, like th this person um, behind us in this um, SUV kind of car, I think they're called uh, Cam something, um, he was actually behind me when I was photographing and they were, you know, like these guys were pumping up like reggaeton music, they were being, being very loud and kind of like annoyed that we were in the street that they were trying to, you know, like, you know, like rock their, their vehicle on and suddenly they jumped on the sidewalk and when they saw the dancer, yeah. what they're doing, they, like literally the guy stopped in his truck and was like, <sighs> you know, and kind of like, you know, taken aback by, by the dancer jumping. And as soon as the dancer jumped, you know, he left. And um, yeah, I, I actually posted a video of this moment. So yeah, that's, I guess, I hope that's the best way to answer that question. Thank you, Omar. Uh, maybe, John, um, if we have the chance to see your heart and maybe the same question for you. Uh, how long does it take for you to take uh, this kind of amazing picture of landscape that we saw earlier, um, generally speaking, and maybe the one that has taken you the most amount of time, the biggest amount of time? Yeah, um, you know, so early on when my career, like, you know, 15 years ago, I would hike out into the middle of the woods, you know, for two, three weeks at a time, really absorb the area. So I would find, like, the best season, the best lighting, and then everything kind of has to cooperate with the moment. And I think, like, with landscape photography, it's, it's like a very humbling art because nature really is dictating your art. You don't really get much of a choice. Although you're making the shot, nature is kind of predicting exactly what the shot is going to be. So um, some of my shots have taken 10, you know, 15 years. Some I'm still working on. Um, I have uh, one on foundation that took me, you know, 10 years. It sold a couple years ago. Um, the canyon one right there, that took me multiple years to get um, a connection with the Navajo tribe to get to know them because that's a very popular tourist destination. So it gets completely packed and you'll never get like a shot without it looking like Disneyland. So I had to make a connection with the tribe and really kind of like get to know everybody and then I was able to get brought out there and by myself and shoot the entire canyon and all the slots and then that was actually, they took me out there at night and I've been out there many years so it's like all my shots have taken quite a bit of time of just planning. It's a very rare moment where I get to just like drive up to a destination and just get that shot. Although that has happened, it's it's like one of those rare moments. So yeah, it's 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 planning, it's dedication. And there's and I don't use any Photoshop, so it's all done within the camera. Cool. Thank you, John. And same question to you, uh, Pauline. How long does it take for you in terms of both you know thinking of the picture, the preparation, and obviously the shot itself, generally speaking? Um, it really depends on the project, to be honest. Uh, sometimes it's just, um, it just happened. It just happened. Uh, you know, it's with our bodies, so it's really different. You have to feel comfortable to do it. Uh, you also have to trust uh, the camera and uh, sometimes the photographer. Um, so it depends on the project. It can take months, it can take a few minutes. Um, but it's all about uh, feeling uh, comfortable because it's all about that. It's all about uh, um, feeling, um, being yourself. And uh, yeah, I think uh, that's the good answer. Thank you. Uh, keep the mic and I've got a question for you and for the three of you. So maybe 30 seconds each so that we stay on time. Um, you know, what is the key word of your art? And because it, we, we see photography by what we see, but obviously there is, you know, the project that you have in mind. So how would you summarize your, your art in a couple of words, maybe? Uh, freedom, uh, self-confidence, uh, and self-love. Thank you. Omar? Um, how would I describe my work? Yeah, I'd like to summarize it in like a couple of words. A royal hot mess. Sorry, what? A royal hot mess. Oh my God. I love mess. I love the messiness of life, and that's what I'm trying to portray. That life is not perfect. Life is messed up. Uh, we go through messed up stuff every day. But if you don't enjoy your life as it's happening, you're not living life. I know so many people that get so like enthralled in this like health 
and you have to like eat the right things and do the right things and breathe the right way. And at the end, it's like, are you really living if you're worrying that much about how you're living your life? Just live your life and enjoy it. So that's what I'm trying to portray. Thank you. And John, to conclude? Uh, I would say dedication, perseverance, uh, blissful happiness, maybe like freedom. Uh, my art is always just based on me traveling the world and just enjoying life. So I don't know, just I guess immense dedication. And real quick, I know that a lot of photographers are here right now and you're here to hear something inspirational. So I just want to say to everybody here who is looking at the market saying, I haven't sold anything for months. I want to leave. I want to give up. It took me five years to sell my first piece, and I sold it for $250. And that gave me the ammo and fuel to chase my journey and open up two more galleries and continue to chase my life and my career doing this. So I say to anybody here right now who is willing to chase their passion and give up everything, save nothing for the swim back and keep going. That's a great conclusion. Thank you, Ahmed John, and thank you, everybody.